Peter, are you worried that schools may be affirming a child's preferred gender without telling their parents? Well, the starting point has to be what is in the best interest and welfare of the child. And we know that young trans people who are not affirmed tend to have very high levels of anxiety, depression, and even self-harm. So not affirming their gender identity is very damaging and destructive to the young person. So that is why schools are, for the most part, accepting young trans people's affirmation of their own gender identity. Uh, of course, it is always best if schools do consult with parents uh, in conjunction with the child, but I think they need to get uh, permission from the child to do that because we know that there are some parents who are very hostile and prejudiced and would actually verbally harass and even physically violently assault their child if they knew that they were trans. So that would put a young trans person in danger. So mm. we need to not have not have a blanket policy, but a selective policy. Schools need to ask the young person, will it be safe and are you OK for us to discuss this with your parents? Uh, but, is that OK? But Peter, are you do you not agree that in the vast majority of cases, parents have their best have their children's best interests at heart. Teachers may care about the children, of course they do, but it's only skin deep most of the time. Parents have such a more responsibility for that child, more love, more care than a teacher ever could, really. And this goes against that fundamental relationship and it means that children are having secrets with a teacher. Do you not think that's slightly alarming? Well, you're right. Most parents do care for and love their child regardless of whether they're trans or not, and that's fantastic. But there is a small minority who are very, very hurtful and hateful towards their trans kids. And it does make those kids um, depressed, anxious, and even, in many cases, contemplating or even attempting suicide. Mm. So we have, to avoid, we have to avoid that danger. Caroline, it seems to me that Peter is assuming that all of these children at school have genuine gender dysphoria and are genuinely trans. But we know from a lot of evidence um, that there is often social contagion effect going in our schools. I've been a teenage girl. People jump onto fads. We know the number of people saying that they're non-binary of a school age has risen sharply. Do you think that's at play here? Yes, and I, I just would like to say first that the statistics, the narrative that Peter is referring to about the levels of self-harm, um, these have long been discredited. Uh, over and over again, people are bringing this up, and only this morning, actually, if you look on Twitter, there's a debate between Justin Webb, Nick Robinson, and Steve Chalk had raised the same statistics. He had been pointed to the discreditation of this narrative, and he had apologised publicly for using an outdated narrative which well overstates this idea of self-harm. It's a dangerous narrative, and kids themselves are starting to buy into it. It's discredited. And now that we have a very large social media contagion, there's a huge number of children buying into this narrative. Um, Peter, do you accept that for some children, this will just be a phase? There may be other mental health problems going on. There may be a link between autism and feeling uncomfortable in your body, particularly for young females. And this is very real. And if teachers are affirming that they are of a different gender, that could set them on the path to irreversible, life-changing decisions. Well, no school simply affirms a young trans person's gender identity. That's what the report uh, says. They, no, that is not true. The schools will affirm, but they will also counsel that young person. They will refer that young person to various agencies and that to give that young person support. Now, all these arguments against trans people are exactly the same arguments that were used against gay people 30 or 40 years ago. They have people say, on. oh, there can't be all these gay people, they're all coming out, it's just social contagion. It's not yeah. true, not true. But these on, are, for, in, in most cases, genuine young people. There may be some young people, a small minority, who are, you know, 
going along with a trend or a fad, but that is not typical and it's very offensive to trans people to suggest that that is the case. But hang on, isn't, uh, Caroline, it's not the same as coming out as gay, homosexual, it's not is it? Because this could lead to genuine, irreversible changes if you go down the path of hormones, if you go down the path of surgeries, it's, it's, it's different. It's not the same thing, and I don't like equating yeah, it. It's completely different, and, and it's harmful to sort of equate the two. And again, Peter's just using outdated narratives and data. Over and over again, look at the CAST report. They say 87% of children who start to think that they might have been, you know, have gender dysphoria, they grow out of it. 87% grow out of it. So the idea that those children might instead be affirmed as being in the wrong body puts them on a, on a pathway towards irreversible damage. It's also ridiculous to conflate... Um, homophobia and this narrative. Peter, do you think that children should be challenged in any way when they suggest to a teacher or to a parent or to a, a guardian of some description that they are feeling that they were born in the wrong body? Do you not think that should be challenged at all? Well, of course, it is challenged and questioned, but in a supportive way. I mean, all the agencies that I'm aware of, do uh, accept a young person's affirmation, but then talk through it, you know, talk about what else is going on in their life and look at all other potential influences and just check that a person is affirming correctly who they feel they are. But I've got to emphasize all that schools are doing is accepting a trans young person's uh, trans name and identity their pronouns, that's all they're doing. They're not pushing them on a pathway to medical intervention at all. It's simply about what we call social transitioning. That but, is the young person affirming in terms of their name and their pronouns that they have a transgender identity. And that is not harmful, that is not damaging. Of course, as that young person progresses through life, um, there will be further you know, measures and interventions taken, but only when that young person is absolutely certain. And we know that main, trans people have to wait years and years and years to get medical interventions. It takes a very long time. Waiting times at gender identity clinics range from three to even eight years in some instances in some parts of the country. So this is not something that's done on a women, fa women fancy. And we know that trans young people who are affirmed are much happier and where their parents are consulted and supportive, the parents mm. affirm that their young person is happier in their new trans identity. Well, Caroline, we've heard from we've heard about gender clinics not going well, essentially making big mistakes um, and pushing children towards irreversible surgery. We have seen that. That's why one of the clinics was shut down, I believe. Um, but also in terms of, uh, Peter says there that this is just, you know, that there's, there's, there's no harm in, in doing this. There's no harm in affirming a child's preferred gender, using their preferred pronouns, etc., etc. But there may well be physical safeguarding issues here when it comes to sports. Where does the child go when it comes to sports? What about changing rooms? What about toilets? We've seen how some girls, uh, some mixed schools... Um, children have complained to teachers when they've tried to introduce gender neutral toilets, for example, um, because the girls don't like it because they don't feel safe. Well, yes, firstly, to go back to Peter, aff social affirmation is not a neutral act. To say to a possibly vulnerable young man, to have the adults around him, you know, go along with the idea that he is a girl, to start using, you know, she, her pronouns, to use a girl's name for a young man, you're completely colluding in the idea that a potentially vulnerable young man is actually a woman. So it's a complete sort of derogation of adult duty and of safeguarding to buy into an ideological narrative that this young man has been born in the wrong body. And we know in a great many of the cases that that young man might actually be gay. So it's 
a lot of the time we're putting young gay people on a pathway to irreversible damage and potential sterilization. So it's incorrect to say that uh, social affirmation is a neutral act. And then you've got all the other kids, all the other people in the school who are asked to participate in an ideology which they don't believe and they don't support, which has grave implications and they've got their own freedom of conscience and freedom of speech, which has to be taken into consideration. And your point to you have schools allowing vulnerable young boys going into the girls' toilets and changing rooms. It's harmful for the boy and it's harmful for the girls. Well, that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much indeed, Peter Tatchell there from the Peter Tatchell Foundation activist and founder of Conservatives for Women, Caroline Fisk.